And welcome back to our next fireside chat. My name is Kevin Hill, the executive publisher at FreightWaves, and joining me right now is Katrina Liddell, uh, the president of XPO Forwarding and Expedite. How are you doing today, Katrina? I'm great, Kevin. Thank you for having me. Great, great for for you taking the time to uh, to talk to us here uh, today. We really appreciate it. Now, um, how did XPO get into vaccine distributions? So we've actually been participating in moving pharmaceutical products and in vaccines for many years. So our Expedite team um, moves moves this type of product every year. Um, this is just a bit on a different scale. So not new to us, just a, a bit different with a few different challenges. And um, we actually move the vaccine with temperature validated trucks. Um, we understand the processes and the certifications necessary. And we have the visibility um, in our technology platform, XPO Connect, to really give um, both shippers and consignees visibility to the product at all times. Um, I'd also add, you know, we've got really high standards in our fleet of validated trucks, temperature validated trucks um, in, the, in the clean environments inside the trailers, um, give these shippers and the pharmaceutical manufacturers, as well as our distribution partners, confidence in our ability to move this product. You mentioned the process of, of getting of being certified to carry the vac vaccine. Are there any um, highlights you can share with us uh, about that process and how it goes? Sure, I'd be happy to. So it's not a, a certification specific to vaccines. It's a, we consider this a high value, high security product. And so we have protocol around how we manage the movement of that product. So we take steps like using team drivers so that there's always someone with the truck and the product at any time. Um, we, don't, we don't allow anyone in our fleet or in our operation to discuss any low details outside of shipper and consignee. Um, we precondition the trailers a couple of hours before scheduled pickup time so that we don't have any lingering in any particular places. Um, and then, of course, we have the security on the actual trailer itself so that any change um, in this situation, you know, both the shipper and XPO are, are notified right away so we can take, um, we can take you know, measures to mitigate any of those challenges. So the distribution, of the actual distribution of the vaccines must be challenging. Um, you know, can you describe some of the operations involved in, in that distribution process? Um, so we're actually transporting the vaccine for the major pharmaceutical companies as well as for distribution partners. Um, and we're moving product from manufacturing facility to, in some cases, air freight hubs, in other cases, distribution centers or cold storage facilities. And then from there, in many cases, to the final point of use where a person would actually be inoculated with the vaccine. So some of the vaccines have different temperature requirements. Some have to be kept in ultra low condition, ultra cold conditions. Others don't. So we um, can apply the proper product, um, the proper equipment to move that product depending on what is required. Yeah, it's a very complex movement, right? From, from the actual distribution to the, the storage. What, what are some of the variables that, that you encounter uh, with, with this complex supply chain that the, you know, is the nature of the vaccine? Absolutely, so everything is a factor. Weather is a factor, traffic can be a factor. Um, the product requirements themselves can be a factor as far as you know, the temperature that the product needs to, be, needs to be stored at and can be moved at. So we have the ability to um, apply the right equipment to, the, to each of these moves just based on what the specific requirements are. And then things like those other like, factors that are outside of the actual product, like the weather and traffic and all variety of other items like that, um, we manage that through our XPO Connect platform, which is our technology platform that gives us visibility to what's happening on our particular route so that we can make adjustments as we need to kind of in flight. Um, and then, of course, if there's anything going on in one particular region or if, you know, priority changes as far as like where a shipper is trying to, to move the vaccine um, at that particular time, we can adjust on the fly. So you have those technology solutions and you have the, the, the XPO network, which is a vast network, uh, logistical network. How does, did you have to make any changes to that network for the, 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 the vaccine and the demands of moving that logistically? Or at, you know, how did you fit everything together? Sure. So as you know, you know these networks are massive and complex. Um, we didn't have to actually make any specific changes to our network. It was more about what the best way to inject the product into the network was. And we have the flexibility to be able to you know, move all kinds of product, not just vaccine, but also vaccine-related items. Things like syringes and saline and items like PPE, gowns, masks, and other um, gear like that, really since the beginning of the pandemic, 
And so we've made the necessary adjustments um, in our routing and in our in our late, you know, in our our blade transportation in order to be able to meet those. So are, were there any any unknown variables or ripple effects that, that happened through the logistical network once you started carrying the vaccine? Um, the only real ripple effect, I would say, was just being able to have that flexibility, um, having the technology that gives us visibility to where every shipment is all the time, and also really being able to see what's happening inside the trailer of a, you know, of a temperature-validated piece of equipment. So we know at all times, if there's anything that changes inside, you know, inside the trailer that would affect the condition of the product, we know that right away. And then we can make the adjustments that are needed. And similarly, if there's something that's going on from a routing standpoint or weather traffic or any of these other variables, thanks to the technology platform that we have in XPO Connect, we're actually able to make those adjustments on the fly. We know XPO partners with several different, uh, you know, vendors, customers, competitors uh, sometimes to uh, to get the job done. Uh, how's that been with uh, partnerships with uh, distributing the, the vaccine? So that's a great question. So for one, we've seen the whole industry really come together to prioritize getting any kind of PPE, everything related to the vaccine out as quickly and safely as possible. Um, XPO throughout this pandemic, we've been working with, with partners like the New York City Emergency Management Department, for example, where we've provided 24-7 logistics support. Uh, we have responsibility with that organization to provide emergency distribution of supplies like MREs, which of course, no one wants to eat an MRE unless you need one, then you're really glad it's there. So we're getting those out. Um, Over-the-counter medical products, things like gloves and sanitizer, blankets, baby formula, you know, things that are really important to have when you need them, where you need them. So our team's mobilized around that. Um, other items, you know, we worked with Ford Motor Company, as you know, you know, they actually converted a line uh, to, pro to produce PPE, and we managed hundreds of expedited shipments of visors and masks and gowns you know, to hospitals and to healthcare providers um, all over the country. So that kind of flexibility and having really strong partnerships, both with customers, uh, with the, you know, the government agencies, and also with you know, other logistics companies has really helped make this more of a seamless, um, you know, a seamless situation for, for end users. Yeah, you, you mentioned the fact of the PPE and, and we've been through this crisis now for, for almost coming up on a year. And I, I suppose that those emergency loads of PPE and MREs uh, laid a, a really good foundation for the, the network and distribution of the vaccine and kind of the urgency and timeliness and, you know, having though those partners already established, right? So actually having been part of the PPE transportation network from the beginning gave us really nice visibility into, you know, where some of the, you know, most critical shipments were going to be going, um, some idea around volumes and, you know, specifically where like healthcare organizations were going to need additional support. So that gave us a great view um, and gave us a really nice starting point for starting to move vaccine as well. I'm sure it did. It, it, it's a nice foundation uh, for, for what you guys are doing right now. I can, can you explain a little bit about the sensitive nature of, uh, of carrying something that is so delicate and high value uh, around in, uh, in, in your network? Yes. And some of the steps that we take are items like making sure that we have team drivers uh, with these products so that, that we stay with the, We have someone staying with the product at all times. Uh, we don't discuss low details with anyone other than the shipper or the consignee. Uh, we precondition our trailers. And of course, we have security that actually you know, keeps the, the trailer um, secure at all times. And if anything um, about that changes, then we're, we're notified right away through XPO Connect, both XPO and the shipper, so that we can mitigate those. And these are all industry best practices. So there are things that people who move pharmaceutical products practice all of these um, on a regular basis. I look into the future, there's uh, the old uh, saying, you know, uh, every crisis is an opportunity. And if we look forward in, into the future, what we've learned during this crisis and how we can carry forward into becoming more efficient and more highly specialized, what are some of the lessons that, that you've learned and, and XBO's learned uh, about maybe business in the future once we get out of this, this crisis that we've been in for a year now? Sure. I think that um, it's really, I think the thing that, that we've learned probably the most is how important being technology forward is 
And the foundation that we have at XPO with XPO Connect that gives us the visibility not only to where the trucks are and you know the conditions that are going on around a particular truck, but also what's going inside on inside the trailer. Or you know if anything changes, we want to know very quickly, and we're we're in a, in a very strong position to be able to do that. So I think that this um, kind of reiterates for us the importance of the technology investments that we've made historically, and that we will continue to do so in the future. Um, so that we can stay really ahead of the trend of being able to have eyes on every truck, eyes in every trailer, um, and really being able to kind of mitigate any kind of risky circumstances or any kind of uh, situation that would in any way harm or damage um, the product. Yeah, I think uh, certainly on visibility and, and automation, this has really pulled forward uh, a lot of, I won't say demand, but a lot of necessity, right? It's pulled forward and it's made everyone take that technical tech leap uh, forward uh, to, to be able to, to, to distribute not only uh, the vaccines, but the PPE equipment and, and MREs uh, as well that you mentioned earlier on this. Um, when, when we look at other parts of, you know, outside of the vaccine, uh, other parts of the, the pharma and healthcare uh, supply chain, what are some of the trends that, that you're seeing um, out there right now? Sure. So we've seen um, healthcare organizations really um, making sure that they're stocked up on PPE and on other items that are related um, to vaccine distribution, but also things like, you know, the COVID test kits. But, you know, specifically, we see, you know, increased movement of syringes and disinfectants, styrofoam, you know, things like dry ice and refrigerant have become more important. So we've seen really um, healthcare providers taking a very proactive approach on making sure that they've got the necessary products um, on hand. So that's, of course, affecting the supply chain as well. Thank you. Uh, Katrina, uh, it's been a pleasure. Are there any parting words or, or things you'd like uh, to, to share with our audience? Yeah, I think one thing that I would just like to add is, you know, our employees, our, our drivers, our dispatchers, everyone involved in this process um, has always provided an essential service. And now, in addition to um, what they kind of did every day and the acknowledgement that they got within the industry. I think that they're getting to see and they're, they're being acknowledged uh, for their essential work by others outside the industry as well. And they've really appreciated that. And I would just say that, you know, we, I included and, and our teams are really proud to be part of this and really appreciate the conversation today with you um, and just generally giving some visibility to the hard work that these teams are doing every day and to the essential nature of their business. Thank you very much. And if our audience wants to reach out and learn more about about XPO's global forwarding and expedite division, uh, how do they go about that? Yes, please reach out to us on any social media platform. We're on Facebook. We're on LinkedIn. Um, you can certainly reach out to us through our XPO.com uh, website, and we will be getting back to you right away. Again, thank you very much, Katrina. And stay tuned, everybody, for our next Fireside Chat.